Well, good morning, church. Good morning. All right. Hallelujah. What a way to begin our service with a positive declaration. Amen. I mean, you have a choice. What do you want to believe? But I want to encourage you this morning. You know, the only kind of belief that will ever reward you truly. Some belief will, instead of reward you, will sunk you. But when you begin to believe in the word of the Lord, I promise you that you will be blessed. I promise you that you will be encouraged. Amen. All right. Get your Bible ready. And we want to begin together this morning. I want to continue upon what we have shared uh, last Sunday. And I want to share with you uh, what I titled the groundwork, right? The groundwork. Um, yesterday, last week, uh, we begin to touch base on the issues of um, preparing a place uh, to enlarge our tent. All right. So I want to continue this morning. And uh, I don't know about you, but I, I love to travel. And my favorite mode of transportation is, of course, airplane. And ever since I was small, um, I'm fascinated by an airplane and how it works. You know. And in fact, I I I could remember that. There was a time that I want to be a pilot. I don't know if I can, but you know, I'm just you know, there's just such a such a persona, such a charisma when you see a pilot, you know, and and you know. But as I grew up, especially in America, I became a passenger. I travel a lot, visiting many airports. You know, I begin to notice uh, something that is very vital to the beauty and the, the sophistication of an airplane, and you know, the crew that works airborne. You know, is is what's what's going on in the ground. You know, so um, uh, my wife's uh, father used to be a flight engineer a long time ago in Indonesia and and her mom used to be a ground crew stewardess also so you know as I grew up I realized at one time I was traveling uh, from New York uh, going back to Boston and my flight was delayed not one hour not two hour but it was delayed more than four hours you know I, you know how you boarded the flight you know you, you you try to sleep you woke up you thought you were landing in Boston but you were still in the gate you know? so it's it's one of those flight um, you you know, and the more I realized, the more I became to be appreciative of this important element within the air, uh, within the air, air transportation of our of the world. You know, which is the ground crew. You know, you know the flight, the airplane can be sophisticated. You know, the pilot can be so well trained, the crew can be so good, but without a reliable groundwork, you know, um, I can bet you that you know none of those plane will ever give you satisfaction. You know, when I say the ground crew, you know, I want to extend the understanding of not just the one who maintain the aircraft, you know, who help you to park, who help the pilot uh, direct the, uh, um, the, the where, where you park the, the flight and the gate, but also the air traffic controllers, you know, and the security, you know, all those things, you know, those are hard work that is not glamour, often, oftentimes forgotten and undermined, but I can guarantee you that if they are not there, you know, we wouldn't be able to uh, understand, let alone enjoy, you know, the, the luxury of what it's like to feel, uh, uh, to, to, to fly on an airplane. I remember, uh, I think it's almost exactly a year ago today, you know, in one of the islands in Indonesia called Palu, you know, we suffered a massive earthquake that, you know, resulted in a tsunami. And I don't know if you noticed, but there was a, a, a great story that came out of it, you know, uh, in which in, in the airport in Palu, you know, minutes before the, in fact, right on the same minutes when the earthquake began to hit, you know, it's a massive earthquake. I think it was seven point something. Uh, there's this one flight that is about to take take off, and miraculously, the air traffic controller, you know, instructed the pilot, you know, to take off three minutes earlier. And you know, as they begin to taxi on the runway, the pilot can feel, you know, and can literally see the runway. It seems like the runway is moving. You know, but then again, the, uh, he, he communicated with the air traffic control and the air traffic control, this one man who be, ended up becoming the hero, you know, continuously guided the pilot, you know, and he was there despite being issued an order to evacuate the building and evacuate the tower. He persevered to the last minute until this flight was airborne. And as a result, you know, he became the one of the 
victim of uh, he, he died because of the the of, because of the massive damage uh, in the in the traffic tower in the air traffic tower, so he perished in that incident. Well, you know what? As I was reading that, you know, I, I begin to understand the importance of a groundwork. You know, there's no glamorous airborne experience without the reliable groundwork, the ground crew that works. You know, so in the same way, you know, when we talk about our spiritual life, you know, uh, we we many times we are in impressed with what is seen, the work that somebody else done, but we fail to understand the groundwork that oftentimes took place unnoticed. It's unglamored, you know, and nobody knows, but whatever is done behind stage, behind the screen, it pays the way for the glamour of what is seen by so many people. That's why I titled my sermon this morning, The Groundwork, because I think the groundwork is important for whatever it is that we're trying to build. All right. We learn Isaiah 54, verse 2 to 3. You know, we said this verse many times. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. Because in the following verses, you know, the famous one, you know, you will grow to the left, to the right, to the north, and to the south. You know, but what I, what, what I really want to emphasize this morning it's not the enlarge your tent, because actually there's a word that comes before that, which is enlarge the place, enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge the ground on which your tent sits. Enlarge the bedrock, the foundation on which everything that you build rested. So, you know, this verses actually give you an exhortation to clear the ground, work the ground, process the ground, enlarge it before you were ever thinking about building up of the tent, of the build, of the life, or whatever it is that you're trying to build. The NRSV version says enlarge the site, you know, the very location, you know. And I want to connect it to the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 20. It says there, dear friends, keep building on the foundation of your most holy faith. So in this analogy, you know, the place, the site, which is called the foundation, is actually our holy faith. If you want to build anything as a believer, then the foundation must be our holy faith. Uh, keep uh, Pay attention, it's not just said faith, because faith in standing alone, it could be just believism. It could just believe in anything. It could just believe in yourself. It could just be believing in a system. It could just be believing in other people. Maybe your parents or people that you've been depending on. But it says here, your holy faith, which is a reference to your faith in God. You know, so this has got to be the place where you lay down your tent, where you erected your tent. It has got to be the bedrock of everything that you are trying to build in this in this life. You know, build yourself up, found it on your most holy faith. All right. So let me begin with that. I want to encourage you this morning because we are talking a lot about faith this month because we believe that one of the things that we're praying, we're inciting and we're hoping, we're uh, deliberately targeting to be enlarged this year, you know, is our faith. It is my prayer, it is my desire that uh, this year your faith will be enlarged, will grow. Amen. So many people say that faith is likened to a tree, you know, the popular analogy is faith is likened to a muscle, you know, in order for you to grow it, then you must use it, you know, but this morning I want to use a different parable, you know, to, to kind of give you a clear understanding how you are to work the ground before you build anything. I want to talk to you about the parable of the soil, because I believe that, you know, in this essence, faith is also likened to a soil that needs work, all right, faith is likened to a soil. Would you open with me the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13? Matthew chapter 13, I'm going to be reading from New International Version. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 to 9. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. It says, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables. He told them many things in parables. 
saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came up and eat it, came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no roots. Because they had no roots. It was shallow and they had no roots. Verse 7, other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, a sixty, and thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Now I know you have two on the side of your head. If you would just grab it, you know, warm it up. I know you have ears. But what's most important is not what's hurt, but what you come to observe right here. Because ears are not just the two on the side of your head. But the most important is your spiritual ear right here. All right? So that's, that's my prayer. That's exactly where I'm aiming at this morning. That, that the, 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 the ear of your heart will be open. That you will receive it. All right? So... I want to talk to you this morning about faith, you know, likened to a soil that needs work. You know, Jesus gave a parable because parable is easy to understand, at least for the people in that time. And it's also for the people in our time, you know, because this parable makes it very relevant to, to all of us. And he spoke on the parable of the, the seed that was being scattered by the soil. Now, there are several different types of soils in this parable, but what is the same throughout the story is the seed. The seed is a good seed. Come on, everybody say good seed. Amen. Our Lord is the one that provides good seed. And this seed is a good seed. This is a perfect seed. This is an all-successful seed. This is an incorruptible seed. This is guaranteed, all right? But when he sowed the seed, you know, the way that which the story was being told is very interesting. You know, it can tell you that the sower sowed the seed indiscriminately. Just massive sowing. He just sow it everywhere, you know. But there are several different types of soil that, that we can learn this morning. And the first one that we can learn, you know, it says here, some fell along the path. Some fell along the path. And I'm showing you this picture right here. You know, you see that arrow, you know, that's the path. And growing up in a farm, I know several things about how a farm is being structured. And you can't just plant on a massive side of land without creating a path in the middle. You know, because you need to pass by when you water it, when you fertilize it. You need to create a path where farming equipment can, 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 can go through, you know. What you got to understand is that this path, before it begins, is the same type of soil. Like the one on which the wheat grow, all right? But because it was specifically not planted and it was specifically passed through by heavy equipment and people stomping, it becomes hard. And this path become hardened, all right? So I want you to get that picture, that analogy, so that you can understand this better. Because this passage was talking about that, you know, this seed was being sown and some fell right onto this path. So it did not go through, it was not buried under the dirt, but it was just laying on top. But it was laying on the, on the same type of dirt, but this one is a hardened dirt, all right? And if you jump into, let's jump into the interpretation, you know, how Jesus uh, explained it. Verse 18, he says, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. Verse 19, he says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. It is the seed sown along the path. Verse 20, the seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no roots, they last only a short time. When trouble or persuasion comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refer to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth the choke, the, uh, choke the word, making it unfruitful. 
But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands, understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. All right. So the word understands there, you know, so the, 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 the seed that fall along the path are those who hears the message of the kingdom, but does not understand it. So everyone gets to hear the same message, good message, good seed. Come on, everybody say good seed, good message, all right? Everybody gets to hear the same message, good message. Everybody gets to receive the same seed, good seed. Just like all of you here, you are in the same room, you get to listen to the same message. But I can guarantee you that you will come out of this room, you know, having different impact because of the differences of your heart condition. Because of the differences of your faith, the soil where that seed was being planted, all right? The word understand there, Sunni it gives you an understanding put together, being put together, being worked out together. It's like trying to piece a puzzle together. In other uh, um, uh, uh, figurative understanding, it's like a combatant getting into fight immediately, all right? So you work it out. But you got to understand here that if you try to work the ground as the seed is already on the ground, then it's too late. Because if you try to break the ground with the seed lying on top of the ground, it will destroy the seed. That's why the work of tilling the ground must took place before the sowing of the seed. Hello? That's why it makes sense. I don't know about you, but I still believe in the old practice. Every time before I read the word, I pray. Hello? Before I go to church, I prepare myself. Even at home, before I begin to read my Bible, I pray. Because I want the work of putting together, breaking ground, happens before the good sower with the good seed begin to sow it. All right? So the truth in farming technology is that, you know, the terrain of the farm gets changed every season. If this season, you know, at least in my farm, I know that if this part of the, of the farm is, you know, the path, next season it could be this one. So the understanding is that even the hardest ground can be made soft again. Hello? Even the hardest ground, given the right effort, given the right tool, can be made soft again. And you know what? I am so grateful because this is the expertise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can even soften. In fact, in the book of Ezekiel, it says that I will change your hardness of heart. I will replace your heart of stone with heart of flesh. This is my hope. This is my conviction. This is my understanding. I mean, growing up to be this age, I went through several traumatic experiences. I, I, I went through several disappointments. But I can testify to you that even when the enemy tries to make my heart my heart hard, the Holy Spirit works to soften it. Hello? In fact, the Bible says what the enemy turns for evil, he can turn it around for good. You know, if you submit to the Holy Spirit, the work that is being launched at you to destroy your heart, the Holy Spirit will use it actually to break your heart and make it soft so the good seed of God will fall onto the good soil of your heart. Amen? I hope you can understand that. So you know, some fell along the path, you know, it speaks about one who hears but cannot understand. Why can't he understand? Because there's already developed a hardness within. You know, you got to understand that your heart does not become hard overnight. Your faith does not become irresponsive overnight. You know, but many times, if faith is likened to a soil, you begin to have faith on other things. How many of you understand? You've never, you've never seen, you know, um, um, a good seed of wheat, you know, grow on, uh, on top of a rock. You can never, because it's not built for it. It has to be a soft, tender, broken ground. You know, and many times, God will ask us to yield to His molding and forming, allow Him to break our heart so that we can become a good ground. Our heart becomes hardened. Our faith becomes stiff and becomes irresponsive to His truth because oftentimes we expose ourselves to things that continue to harden our heart. 
when, when, when you begin to align yourself with beliefs that is an opposite of the Word of God, your heart begin to little by little become crystallized. You know, if, if anybody of you, if any one of you here uh, uh, cooks rice, you know, here in America, if you just leave it, you know, maybe in Indonesia, if, but in America, I notice it's a lot faster. If you put it, just lay it out there in the open, it's going to become dry, it becomes hard. It's going to lose the moisture. For you to maintain the moisture, you need to put it in a closed container, and better yet, you know, in a rice warmer, you know. But when you left it out in the open, it is exposed to everything. It is exposed to the light. It is exposed to the dryness. It is exposed to uh, a foreign agent. And pretty soon, it will suck out the, the humidity. It will become dry. It will become very hard to chew. You know. I want to remind you again. You know, I, I, being that I'm a pastor here of a student-populated church, I noticed that there are many who started out in this journey being so sold out in this faith. Oh, I, uh, 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 I grew up from a Sunday school. Oh, you know, I used to minister in the church. But you know what? The, the one part about growing up is discipline. And one part about growing up in discipline is that as you grow up, no one will tell you to be disciplined. You must pick it up. You must plant it, install it within you, so that it will. You will. You will practice. You know, uh, self-discipline. You know. So, uh, um, if you grow up from an environment that's every, uh, you know, made up for you, everything is arranged for you. You never had to make make decision. Learn to make decision. You know, when you are left out in an environment where everything is okay without boundaries, and you don't develop that structure within you, you're going to be confused. And then you're going to be exposed to these foreign things. And before long, you allow yourself to be exposed to so many different things. And what started out in the spirit can, can, can end up in the flesh. That's the truth. You know, it grieves me. That's why my prayer is that your faith and spiritual journey will continue here as you pursue your higher learning. You got to understand that you never, you never, you never stop working the soil of your faith. For as long as you shall live, this will be our lifelong pursuit. This will be our lifelong work to keep the tenderness of our heart, to keep the good soil of our faith. So that when God planted something, when he sowed something, instead of sowing, instead of, uh, instead of those seeds falling into the stiff ground of our faith, it falls into the good soil of our faith. All right. The second condition of the soil, you know, it says that some fell on a rocky path, in a rocky places. You know, some fell on rocky places. These rocky places represent, you know, someone who hears the word. I mean, take notice that every one of them in this parable gets, to, gets the same opportunity to hear. You know, it's not that one hear, one doesn't hear. They all hear. They have the same opportunity to, he to hear. They have the same opportunity to receive this good message and this good seed. Alright? But what's different is the heart to which they hear this message. The soil to which they receive the seed. Some fell on rocky places and Jesus explained the rocky places. Someone who hears the word and at once receive it with joy. They receive it with joy. Happy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. Only a short time. You know, they last only a short time. You know, um, I think the problem with us here, especially in America, who's dubbed as the most Christianized nation, is that we don't like good sermon. We don't like good ministry. Amen? You know, but I want to remind you, if you are, you are given variety, supermarket choices of good teaching, and you expose yourself constantly to all those teachings, but you never bother to focus or, you know, uh, make an effort to work on your heart, it will be the same like constantly sowing the best seed, number one seed on this rocky ground. You could be hearing, you know, uh, T.D. Jakes. You could be hearing, you know, Stephen Furtick. You could be hearing all the good names, the big names, the big weeks. You could be hearing all those great preachers. And when you hear, it really inspires you. It makes you joyful. It gives you a little spark. But then again, 
It was there momentarily only to die down. It was not the preacher. In fact, you could be receiving directly from Jesus himself. <laughs> but if you don't understand that what's more important is not the messenger, but your good soil to receive the message. You know, I saw many people, you know, make a habit of listening to good teachings. That's good. I saw you every Sunday coming here and, and, and making an effort to listen to the Word of God. That's good. But can I encourage you to add on this one more discipline? Have a discipline of working your heart, of making sure your faith is always ready to receive. Because if you just sow the best seed every day, but never, not once, invest your time, your energy, your money on working the ground to make sure that the good seed that you are sowing will fall into the good soil, then you're really wasting time, energy, and money. You know. And the Bible says, enlarge the site. What it was saying, actually, makes the ground ready for the tent that is going to be larger. Make it ready. Make the ground ready. Make the site ready before anything else were to be erected on top of it. You know, someone who hears the words at once, receive it with joy, but since they have no roots, they last only a short time. This rocky grounds, you know, it's interesting. The first soil, it speaks about the ground that is in general hard. But this particular terrain is not hard in general, but there are some rocks that mingle in, in between of the good soil. So there will be certain growth, but then again when it received, when it comes into contact with stones, it will stop growing. The roots stop developing, therefore the, the plant is so easily uprooted. <laughs> You know, it will never uh, reach the water source, source, it will never reach nutrition source, and therefore it dries up quickly, you know. I'd like to speak about these rocks, you know, many times we need to work, when, when a farmer were to clear out the ground, one of the things that they do is that they must pick up the rocks and they must throw it out. All right, they must pick up the rocks and they must throw it out to make sure that it will be a soft soil free from rocks where the soil can grow and reach penetrate the soil you know I want to speak to you about the health of your heart you know the health of your faith you know the book of Hebrew repeated three times it says that you know as just has been said today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart and then the book of Proverbs 4, verse 23 says, Above all, all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Hebrews 12, 15 says that, See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, that no bitter roots grow. You know, this rocks represents, you know, bitterness, things that has become crystallized within our heart and stands in the way between the seed and good soil. You know, I want to speak to you this morning if you are a believer, but in your heart you are still harboring grudges of other people. You are still not forgiving other people. You are still harboring hatred. You are still harboring anguish, you know, and, 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 and uh, uh, um, unforgiveness toward each other or toward other people. Those things are exactly the rocks that is... That is uh, that is contained within the good soil of your heart, within the good soil of your faith. You know, I, I encounter so many people, you know, in counseling told me that, Pastor, it's not that I did not know any better. It's not that I never heard the, ver the, the verse. It's not that I did not, I, I, I did not, uh, um, you know, I did not know about, I was not aware of this verse. I know I shouldn't do that. But you know what? It's as if I don't have strength to act upon the truth that I have come to know. So it's exactly like this. The seed was received joyfully. It grows to a certain degree, but then again, it died down. You know. So I want to encourage you this morning, if you're tired of seeing just a tiny sprout, but never a full you know, shaft, never a full tree, maybe you need to work on your ground. 
Maybe you need to clear out the stones. Maybe you need to throw it out. Maybe there are somebody who you need to forgive. Maybe, you know, there are things, you know, because you know, God's holiness can never be intertwined, you know, with the brokenness of man. You know, with, I mean, with, with the brokenness of sinful nature of man. You know, the Bible teaches us of, of, of forgiving other people. The Bible teaches us about being kind and merciful. The Bible teaches us about being generous to other people. You know, maybe there are some rocks within your belief system that hinders the good seed of the Word of God. You know, the third type of soil is, you know, it says that other, other seed fell among thorns. You can see that actually by default, it's a very fertile soil because anything can grow, including thorny bushes. All right. So this seed managed to fall right here. You know, I'm really encouraged as I heard this first because it gives it it it, it reveals to me the reality of my God as the sower. It tells me that God gave the same opportunity whether it's a good soil a soil with a thorny bush, a soil with a rocky ground, and a soil with uh, is, is a path. It all gets the same good seed. God gave the same opportunity. He let the sun shine for everybody, not just good people, but also evil people. He gave the same opportunity. It would be such a shame for us not to take advantage of His goodness, not to receive His goodness. You know, other seed fell among thorns. And this particular soil is someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. Notice the word choke. You know, it means that this good seed share the same source of nutrition with another plan. And this plan, namely, you know, is worries, you know, deceitfulness of wealth, worries of life. You got to understand that if you choose to have faith in God, you must let go of your worry. You will still experience worry. Faith is not the absence of fear. But you know what? You must give more platform of your faith. You must do your best to clear out your ground. Uproot the weeds of worries. Your seed of faith cannot be sharing the same water source with your plant of worries. Your seed of faith cannot be drawing the same nutrition with your seed of deceitfulness of wealth. You have got to clear your ground so that the good seed that was being planted within your faith can grow to maximum potential. This speaks about distraction in our life. It's not that God is not good to us, but we can't seem to make up our mind. We can't seem to make up our mind. We can't seem to let our hearts settle on the truth. I want to encourage you this morning. The Bible says that those with wavering opinion will never be peaceful in their life. If you keep tossing back and fro between truths, you will never be settled. You will never have a good sleep. You will always be confused in your life. I want to encourage you this morning. Attend to your heart. Attend to your faith. And allow the Holy Spirit to process and to inform you. You know, hey, you know what? You, you've been praying to me. You've been asking me this. And it's not that I have problem giving you. But the seed that I'm giving to you will never work well next to your insecurities. Next to your unforgiveness. Next to your... Maybe there are other things that occupy your heart more. The word here, it choke. It choke, it means it pressured. It, it pushes off. You know. And don't get it wrong. The seed will grow. Because it's a good seed. As long as you provide good soil, as long as you take good care of it, it will grow. But as it grow, it will be attacked. It will be pushed off. It will be set aside. It will be cut off by other competing interests in your life. You know, it must be your decision as a good farmer to attend to your soul.
soil. Amen? And of course, the fourth one is the good one. It's a good soil. Still other seed fell on the good soil. Someone who hears the word and understands it. And the word understand there, it means to put it together, to work it together. It's like trying to push, uh, piece the puzzle together. To put it to work together. To bring it together. And this is a verb, by the way. And, and, and you know, it's like a combatant getting engaged into the battle immediately. You know, uh, uh, make it planted, you know. And, and the understanding is that this place has already been, has already been prepared before times. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. I want to encourage you this morning. And I want to appeal to you, you know, um, um, this is a time to be excited, especially if you are a new student in this place and some of you are still young here. You know, don't, don't waste your time. This is a good time of your life, you know. But I want to encourage you, don't just work on getting yourself intellectually, you know, up to date. But you got to understand that you also got to build your spiritual life, spiritual strength. You know, I want to appeal to you. There are some groundworks that needed to be done. The Bible says that the fear of the, the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You can graduate with a piece of paper that says you pass. But that does not guarantee that you are wise. It does not guarantee that you will, you know, put it to work, you know. But add to everything the wisdom of God. And you won't achieve the wisdom of God if you don't build on your spiritual substance. I want to talk about the condition of the good soil, you know. These are the characteristics of a good soil. Number one, the good soil is a soil that is clear. It's a soil that is clear. I remember when I was in my house, you know, the farm, not all of the lands are developed. All the other lands, you know, the bulk of it are still either marshes or like a forest. So when my dad decided that he wants to build plantation, the first thing that he did is he must drain the swamp and he must cut down the tall trees. He must clean it. He must make the land clear so that the good seed that he paid good money for it We'll, we'll, we'll never have to share nutrition. We'll never have to, to share, you know, shades of light with other types of, 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 of species, you know. Have you ever seen a big oak tree in the middle of a wheat field? I bet you never. You know, because it's not designed for that. You know, you can never see an oak, you know, growing in the middle of that field. You know, because it will choke, you know, the supply of lights, you know, waters and nutrition. You know, it's, it's, it's got to be dedicated specifically. So I remember all the workers, you know, cutting up tall grasses, you know, drying up the swamp and then fill, uh, commit, uh, fill the, the gap with another land from the, uh, the nearby hill. And then, you know, cut off the trees, you know, make it flat, make it ground and then work it out. You got to clear it. Come on, you know, nobody else is responsible for you having a clear heart. Nobody else is responsible for you to have a clear conscience. It is you and you alone. It is you and you alone. It is your responsibility. I want to encourage you. If you want to grow to have a good ground where great things can be built, then you must make it a point to keep it clear. You must work to it. You know, a clear conscience is not automatic. It takes discipline and good work. The second characteristic is a good soil. It's a soil that is tilled. You know, it means that there's, an up, there's a possibility that before it was a hard ground. But you till it, you break the ground. You know, with a, with a beast of burden and a yoke. And you know, you put a metal of, you know, I forgot what it's called. And you break the ground, you till it. And you let it pass several times until the soil becomes soft. You know. That's what sin does to our life. That's what the world does to our life. That's what sin does to our understanding. We become callous. We become unfruitful. We become unresponsive. We become, you know, uh, we become irresponsive. We, we, we're not thirst. We're, we were not hungry for the things of God. You know what? You got to expose it to the Word of God. 
The Word of God is like a double-edged sword. I will break, penetrate deep within the soil of our heart. The third characteristic is that it is continually fertilized. It is continually fertilized. It was given proper nutrition. You know, uh, I remember uh, every periodically the workers in my parents' farm would, you know, sow it. You know, it would just they would just give pallets of, you know, nutritious. I don't know what it is. It was to maintain the pH balance. It was to make uh, uh, maybe cut off the I don't know the calcium. Whatever they do, they make sure that the ground becomes rich. You know. I mean, if you expect that once, let me ask you something. You all took a shower before you come here, right? <laughs> Some don't, maybe it's okay. It's a, you know, it's, an, it's a no judgment zone. <laughs> well, let's say you take a shower this morning. I think it's common sense that tomorrow you must take another shower. Agree? Because you stink up. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is called reinforcement. <laughs> because the truth is, you know, we're not going to stay fresh. Even room freshener at the end, it will run out. You must resupply. You know, that's why, you know, if you think that you are strong, the Bible says, if you think you are strong, take heed that you don't fall. Hello? There are some of you that maybe think, oh, you know what, Pastor, thank God, I'm, I'm, I'm raised from a good stock. My parents, you know, trained me well. Uh, they spanked me well, that's what you meant. And, you know, my parents, you know, beat me up when I messed up, you know. Uh, I, I come from a good stock. I come already good. Well, let me tell you something. You're not going to stay good. Because the truth is we're all broken to begin with. Are you listening, church? As handsome as you are, as pretty as you are, as fresh looking as you are, we're all broken creatures in need of God's saving grace. We're all in need, in need of refreshing touch of the Holy Spirit every day. That's why in the book of Lamentation, His grace and mercy are new every morning. It was being made, made provided, available for us. All we need to do is just go to the shower stall and turn the knob. Fresh water is available every day. But if you don't want to take a shower because you just don't like it, it's on you. Maybe you don't pay the water bill. I don't know. You know what? You got to make it a discipline. Fertilize. You know, make good soil doesn't come automatically. Even the best soil there is, you left it unwatered, unattended, it will take no time to become hard. Weeds to grow. Becomes irresponsive. Lose nutrition. And pretty soon, it will become nothing can grow. I want to encourage you this morning. I believe that God desires for every single one of us to grow. I believe that God desires for every single one of us to build great things in life. And as we take heed on Isaiah 54 that says, enlarge. I want to zoom in on the word, the place of your tent. You know, it's, it's a reference to your faith. It's a reference to your heart. Work on it. Guard it. Constantly train it. Water it. Fertilize it. Attend to it. Clear it. Till it. Because the good soil is his part. I mean, the good seed is his part. And you have seen, you have read, you have witnessed in this passage that God is the one who indiscriminately sow it to every single one of us. We all get the same share. We all get the same opportunity. We, we take from the same source. We all get the same good quality seed. But let's work to see that the place, the groundwork is being done properly and ahead of time. So that when the, sow, that when the seed is being sown, it will yield 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. Amen? This is my prayer to you. This is my desire. And I pray this to every single one of us, to me included, that this become our number one priority. We take heed, we attend to the soil of our faith, the soil of our heart. 
that the good seed of God will continue to bear fruit and grow. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. I pray, Lord, that faith will arise in this place. I pray, O oh God, that your people will make it their personal responsibility to attend to their faith, to attend to their heart, to attend, O oh God, to their soil, O oh God. Father, I pray this morning, if there's any hardness of heart, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will begin to break the callousness of our heart. That you will turn even the most callous heart to become a good soil. Father, I pray this morning that if there are any rocky soil within our faith, within our heart, oh God, that you will begin to remind us and empower us to remove the rocks, clear the ground, clear the ground. Help us to heed what Proverbs says that we will guard our heart above all, that we will guard our heart with all due diligence. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will shine the light on us on different importance that compete for our attention. There are those of us who, it's not that we don't hear your word, but there are other voices that are equally loud in our heart. There are other voices, competing voices, competing noises. They are so loud that we, we get the same airtime as the word of your truth. Father, I pray this morning that you will empower us to turn down, turn the dial down on those competing noises. And we will begin to uproot all those things that choke the life out of the good seed that you are planting within our life. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will speak to every single one of us. Holy Spirit, I pray that faith will arise, strength will rise from your people to begin to see, no. I am not going to have an undivided heart. I am not going to let the soil of my heart be cluttered with thorns, with bushes, with weeds. I'm going to uproot it. I'm going to clean. I'm going to clean my field right now in the name of Jesus. Father, help us, oh God. This morning, we want to take responsibility of the good soil of our heart so that the good seed that you are sowing will grow deep, develop roots, grow strong, bear fruits, fruits that remain 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-folds. Heal us, O oh God. Heal us, O oh God. This is our commitment in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.